The term handcrafted gets thrown around a lot these days. It's become a movement, a trend, that can obscure the passionate folks who actually make amazing things by hand. Their remarkable stories need to be told, and I'm going to find them. I'm Anthony Bourdain, and this is Raw Craft. To say that the knife is a chef's most valuable tool isn't just stating the obvious, it's an understatement of titanic proportions. It doesn't matter if you're the executive chef of a Michelin three-star restaurant or the prep cook dicing a 50-pound bag of onions, a good knife is the foundation of everything you do. So who makes the finest chef knives in the world? This guy, Bob Kramer. Bob's one of only 122 master bladesmiths certified in the American Bladesmith Society and the only one who specializes in kitchen knives. Simply put, he's a rock star, forging knives that are as desired for their beauty as they are for their legendary sharpness, resilience, and strength. Kramer knives have become a status symbol among serious chefs and serious knife collectors alike. They're knives that demand excellence of their owners and more importantly, excellence from their creator. I paid Bob a visit at his workshop in beautiful Olympia, Washington. How does one make the most awesome knife in the world? <laughs> Today I'm incorporating meteorites into my material. This is probably man's first encounter with a solid chunk of iron. That's a meteorite. Wow. That's a star stone. The first thing Bob does is forge his own steel. In this case, from melted meteorite. Next, it's a matter of layers. I'll lay up a, a sandwich. Basically, that's your knife right there. So the idea is to cook it down and exactly. smash it. Yep. And, and push all of these layers together. Those layers fuse together and it becomes this. So then this gets ground clean on both sides, mm -hmm. cut and restacked, and becomes that. And then cut a knife out. So it's literally a whole bunch of these become this? Correct. Becomes this, yep. then this, then this, yeah. and then, then the work begins. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Want to see it? Yeah. All right. That'll protect your cool eyes. Cool helmet. Yeah. yeah man. All right. How long would it take for me to make a pizza in there? About a half a second, maybe. Sweet. Yeah. This is just like cooking. It's time, temperature, and technique. Right. You need good material to start with and the proper heat treatment. Just like you can ruin a steak by overcooking it. Could be a great steak to begin with, but you could really mess it up right. by improper technique. Okay, here we go. Now, I'll grind both sides clean to make sure that there's no scale. Cut and restack that billet. this gets cut away, mm -hmm. the fat. So on this, we can either use the bandsaw to cut off that extra material right. or use this grinder to just get rid of that excess meat. Mm -hmm. It's like trimming a steak. Exactly. So next, now that I've got the blank cut out, I need to grind these tapers and this taper and that's all done by eye. Now 
now that the blade is ground and shaped and tapered, it's the magic part. This is where the steel becomes hardened. So we have to take the material up to a particular temperature and hold it, like baking a cake. Only the temperature is 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This is molten salt. So this is sort of a high-tech, high-temperature sous vide. Right. It's an immersion, I was just right? thinking of that. Let me set it in here. So there's carbon in steel. Steel is iron with 1% carbon. There's something very interesting that happens when the carbon dissolves and goes into solution. Not only that, it changes color. Right. There's a shadow that moves through the steel. So this is what the samurai guys were looking for. These guys would fast beforehand. They'd pick an auspicious day, which is probably a moonless night. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really dark in the shop. So with this, I'm gonna pull it out and you'll see it's all orange. And then you'll see a shadow move through the blade. That's the steel transforming. And that's it. Wow. That line that's marching across there, that's the phase shift. It's gone. Yo, what's happening in there? What is, what, what's going on? So this is, a, this is ferric chloride, which is a base. It's kind of on the other side of the acidic scale. And <clears throat> this chemical starts to eat into the steel at a very subtle level. So, you know, some layers get eaten away faster than others. You know, somebody stabbed you to death with that knife, and that would be wrong, I hasten to say. Sure. That knife's so beautiful, you, you, you couldn't help but say, wow, that's a really amazing-looking knife. Damn, that's gorgeous. You'd remember. Oh, wow, look at that. Boom. I think it's good. I think it's ready for a handle. And now I just need to shape and make this comfortable. And presumably, I want it to fit into my massive, uh, exactly. incre yet incredibly sensitive paw. Exactly. All right, final step. Yeah. Put an edge on this guy. Sooner or later, if you have a good knife, in fact, sooner, in fact, constantly, you should be doing what we're about to do here. And I'm trying to use the full surface of the stone. And the purpose, this is the most crucial stone. This first stone sets up the edge. This is the foundational stone. So if you watch how this cuts, it doesn't want to push cut. It's because we haven't stropped the edge. It'll slide cut easily. Right. But it won't, it won't. push cut. And what the push cut is, is what a razor will do. Right. And if I just give this a few strokes on the leather, and this is just a plain piece of leather, Whoa, that's nice. Oh yeah, light butter. Nice, thank you. Look at that. Oh. oh man, that's fun. Hey, I'm having fun using this knife. I've never had so much fun cutting chives. Look at those things. Nice. Now you, you. You were a chef before you. You were a cook. I was a cook. I would You're say I was never a chef, but yeah, I was definitely in the business, swinging a knife for eight hours a day. So is that where this all started? You were you were dissatisfied with the quality of a uh, of blade that you, you were know, seeing? I or? was uh, in college. I was taking science classes. I was working at a hotel full time, and it was curious to me that nobody in the kitchen really knew how to take care of their knives. So I thought I'd make a little extra money. I figured out how to sharpen some knives and. And uh, the more, I, the deeper I got, the more I was hooked. And so, you know, I quit school and just started sharpening and making knives. You'll forgive me for saying so, but that sounds like a really bad idea. Yeah. I mean, terrible. it was just yeah. about the dumbest thing you could do at the time, Absolutely. and yet it worked out. Uh, it has worked out, yeah. You didn't, but you didn't really know what you were doing, either. I had no idea. So the other night I'm in here working, I'm making some steel for a knife using a meteor. I'm thinking, what's a cool way to make some salmon? And I'm gonna heat up a meteorite and use it to smoke this. Induction coil. All right. Chunk of stardust. 
piece of cherry wood. Hello? Yeah. Smoky scrumptiousness, I smell. All right. I believe we can pour the beverages now. All right. Yay. So you got to tell me, what do you think? Did you know this man when he decided to throw away a perfectly good career and one dead end job in a restaurant you know, business to, I don't know where to the pursue good this? Career came from because it was clowning and then uh, some other things. But did you see clowning? He was went to. Did you go to clown college? I did. did go to college. You went to there is a clown college in Florida, right? Oh, now I want to drink. So when I was making food. I might spend two or three days making a sauce, prepping a stock, stuffing a turkey or something. Everybody sits down, 45 minutes later, it's gone. Hopefully we have a great memory. This knife could get used every day to make a meal that maybe that makes a memory. So this is like a magnifying glass. It goes on through whoever's using it. If you're using it and you make a bunch of meals, that sort of transcends out. I like that feeling. I think that's cool. Use the passion and stick into it, no matter what someone else says. Bob Kramer is clearly out of his mind. This process is so difficult and so long, it's insane to work this hard to improve something as utilitarian as a knife, you'd think. But at the end of the day, what comes out is so unique and so beautiful, all I can say is that I want that kind of crazy. That's the kind of crazy that makes the world a better place.